Oh boy, gee whiz, I can't wait to check the Meta Monday breakdown on the Warhammer Competitive subreddit over on Reddit. Tyranids, Chaos, Custodies, 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 Chaos Knights, Tau, Chaos Demons, Tyranids, Tau, Tyranids. Custodies, Tau, Custodies, Tau, Custodies, Chaos Demons, Tau, Custodies, Custodies, Custodies. Tyranids, Tau, Tau, Thousand Sons, Drakar, Tyranids, Tau. Tau, Admec, Tyranids. Tau, Custodes, Tau, Necrons, Custodes, Black, Templars, Drukhari. Admec, Tau, White Scars, Necrons, Grey Knights. Thousand Suns, Tau, Jeez, the Cult, Nurglings, Tyranids. Oh, I want to say Tau one more time. Warhammer as a competitive game right now is a fucking hot mess. I want to talk about what the problem is, why Custodes and Tau are so good and why they have a nearly 70% win rate, and why this is more a problem than just at your mid to top tables at an event, and why it affects the, the casual game as well, and what Games Workshop need to do to fix this kind of thing and stop having this happen. The Tau and Custodes books released recently, they're some of the newest books in the game, and they're fucking nuts. Bring in, like I said, around a 70% win rate, uh, especially when you exclude the mirror. When you exclude the mirror, that's when the win rate goes above 70. This week, we actually saw a bit of a drop, with Custodes only getting a 62% win rate, and Tower 65. So a little bit less than 70 is some progress, I guess. A 70% win rate is kind of insane. Really, in any game, you should be aiming to have a deck or an army, or a champion in League of Legends, or a faction in an RTS, or a fighter in a fighting game to have around a 50% win rate. Maybe slightly above, preferably not, maybe slightly lower, and then allow the player's skill and their ability to understand each matchup that they might be going into to allow them to elevate and get into those upper echelons and increase their personal win rates. So we're talking about overall win rate should be around 50, and then player skill should be able to push you up from there. Having a 65 to 70% win rate makes them look more obnoxious and impressive than the Drukhari or Admech ever were. And I want to come at this as well from the perspective that I am a Custodes player. They are one of the factors that I first picked up when I got back into the game two years ago. I recently turned them to Beachhead. I came fourth out of like 180 people. I came second out of Custodes players there. I played quite poorly in some games and still picked up tons of points because the book is fucking broken. So this isn't me being like super salty and sad that I can't beat the top factions, although I do kind of hate Tau, even though I started to collect them more than that in a second. It's me saying that the game would be healthier overall if we balanced this shit. And on the towel thing, I started to pick up some of the stuff because the hammerhead rules that I saw, cool big guns and shit, got me excited. And I bought like a, like a, <laughs> I meant to buy a hammerhead, I accidentally bought the devilfish and a couple of other kits and I haven't put them together, haven't bothered to build them. There's no energy or excitement in it because the towel being so broken makes it kind of depressing to get into the army. Outside of the win rates, it's a problem with metagame share as well. How many people are going to rock up to an event at your local store, at your local event hall with a towel or custodies? army because the army is broken. Tau were introduced back at the end of third edition so they're an age old faction. They've got a lot of uh, a lot of entrenched players are going to have these models knocking about on shelves or in closets or they're going to be easily purchasable on eBay for that reason. There's just going to be a lot of them knocking about so it's easy to get the army together to play events. Meanwhile custodies are the most elite army after knights with a low model count making them cheap to buy into, to build and to paint and they're less taxing to transport to an event and to play by virtue of having less models to move and less dice to roll. I was going to do a video when the Custodes book dropped and I did while at Beachhead which was basically saying why you should start collecting Custodes. I did a video recently with Quipster about that as well where we talked about why he loves Custodes and it touched on a lot of the, the lore and flavour points of why I like Custodes as well. But I wanted to do a video saying Look, this book is dumb, the army is relatively cheap to pick up, there's a low tax on terms of, uh, like I said, transporting to an event. It's a very easy travel army because you haven't got to travel lots of tanks or tons of units. And then it's less taxing in the event as well. Warhammer can be a bit stressful when you've got three hours to complete a five battle round game of Warhammer 40k. And if you're moving like 120 orc boys around, it can be taxing. If you're rolling 30, 40, 50 dice in activation, it can be taxing. Hell, just deciding where each and every unit's going to go and activate and do can be taxing when you have a lot of MSUs, multiple small units, or large horde armies too. Custodes avoids all of that. Much like knights, you just have, I don't know, nine, maybe ten units at most that you have to decide on what they're going to do and where they're going to go, and the quality of their attacks and shots are also low. It's a very easy army to get into. But long story short, I decided not to do that video because, well, you're going to get into it and then people aren't going to want to play with you locally, whether it be your friends or at an event, because the army's too good. But what makes them so fucking good? 
Custodians have some truly outrageous data sheets. The Virtus Praetor, the bikes in particular, and Trajan, their leader. Trajan motherfucking Valoris, as I like to call them. They're the, probably the biggest offenders. They're durable, and they're fighty, and in the case of the bikes, they're also harboring some incredible movement speed and damage output at range too, with these Dark Lance-esque melter shots that they can take and fire. Couple all of that with stratagems like Emperor's Auspice and Transhuman being only one CP, no matter where it's going on bikes. Well, well they, they cost more if they're on units of four and up, but you just hit units of three and you get them nice and cheap and the hideously under cost of Trajan bringing you an extra CP and when you play him he refunds you a CP for each one you spent on a five up so you you always have this access to these command points so you're rarely rarely out of resources and if you've got enough resources you can make one of your units nigh unkillable by turning off your opponent's rerolls and making them only able to wound you on a four up the bikes are five wounds a pop with a two up invulnerable save and they're so fast that you can maneuver them behind obstacles as well to get obscure and yeah, the, the book is is frustrating. The dominant sub-faction, Emperor's Chosen, allows you to have a 4-up Feel No Pain to Immortal, shoring up the traditional weakness to Mortal Wounds and Psychic. It also gives you a single hit or wound reroll per activation, meaning when you're hitting on twos and wounding on twos, you're pretty efficient in getting those shots through those Dark Lance-style Melter Rockets. And then that faction also has a 1 CP strat preemptively to put any unit in your army into another sub-faction, which then opens you up to 5 times 2 so like 10 other, like, like army-wide rules. So you've got a toolbox where you can do pretty much anything you'd ever need to do. Fight first, reduce their attacks, all that sort of stuff. Ha heroically intervene, fight, all that shit. The thing you can't do is advance and charge, really. Everything else is doable if you think far enough ahead. So those are skill elements. But the data sheets will carry you anyway. On top of all that, the book got a preemptive points drop on release week because the book is balanced against some metagame that never ever existed. It's pre nerf Dukari or Admech, maybe. Who the fuck knows at this point? Tau, on the other hand, I have less experience playing against. I've played against them seven times, I think. I've not played with them yet. I plan to I, well, I planned to play with them to learn the game and the fundamentals of the game and then the intricacies of the game. So I'll play every faction if I can. But now I'm bored to tears for this broken army. They have a ton of maneuverability and being able to advance and shoot. And there's stuff that pre-game moves towards objectives as well. But beyond that, they have some rather obnoxious data sheets as well. Broadsides and crisis suits are the biggest defenders for my limited time flailing my arms into them. These things are inexplicably infantry in spite of being huge chunky mech suits that make the Sisters of Battle's Paragon War suits look like complete dog shit. They can fire into combat when they're tagged, so tagging them doesn't really matter. They can fire out of line of sight with mass spamming air fragmentation grenades and smart missile launchers, as well as carrying high quality shots on their main guns, which allow them to delete armor and large elite infantry or units. The broadsides randomly have AP on their melee profiles, so they get to kill squishy melee like orc boys on the crackback if you fail to kill them, which you will. The army has at least two separate instances of being able to reduce your charge by two. Uh, one on, like, I think it's Pathfinder units, the other one on battle suits, as well well, it's a plethora of cheap chaff units like all your infantry and your crew and your vespids and your, and your transports that can provide screens which means actually getting into melee with them is unreasonably difficult and then when you get into melee with them you may just bounce off their t5 four wound or eight wound uh two up save in some instances it's kind of wild the infantry status on the battle suits means that they can abuse terrain by breaching in and out of it with a fire after moving strat and they fly anyway so that's kind of much of a muchness and they can take light cover and to top it all off their shield drones to make anti-tank fire ineffective into them. Uh, one suit in the crisis suit blob can have a two-up save, whilst another one has a four-up feel no pain that can be activated once per battle to tank even more hits, which means when you eventually connect with them, uh, you're not going to kill the entire blob. It's a hugely risky endeavor to try and get into melee with them, especially if they're going to be firing overwatch at you, and often unrewarding as you don't wipe the squad. I was partially joking on my Discord how I know they're an expensive unit, but they should fold to melee, but nothing in the game reasonably trades up into them. It was a joke initially, but when we started like looking at the averages or even rolling hot on some things, like, I don't know, 10 Repenture in Bloody Rose, give them plus one attack with the him as well. I don't think they wipe a squad of six Crisis suits on average if they've got the, uh, the, 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 the shield drones there. And you've got to get them into combat with them as well. So you're looking at having like a, a long bomb charge at a strategic reserve because Repentia also died to all the SMS and airburst as most things in the game do right now. Being T3 into the mass spam of strength 4 out of line of sight shots is fucking obnoxious. When Winters SEO joked that it's Codex battle suit, he was not lying. This man is a prophet of doom. Heed his warnings. So why is this bad that these books are so pushed? I guess something's got to be the best thing, right? 
Well, they're too good. To the point that other armies can't really compete. And like I said, they're at armies that a lot of people either own or picked up very cheaply and easily to get to a uh, battle-ready standard for an event. So we see a lot of them. The metagame share is high. They're the ones converting. They're the ones podium. them. Uh, the game becomes dominated by town custodies and then the only other factions that get to compete are things that are good into them or are warped around crusher stampede is still a reasonable army it's probably in the top three in the top s tier of the game right now because it has a reasonable matchup into these two uh, but again that's town is being propped up by a supplemental fucking warzone book you had to buy beyond that thousand suns seem to be okay into tower because they're good into damage one strength four weapons so the mass land out of line of shot stuff isn't such a problem and they can spam mortal wounds which is actually still good into town they didn't Give them a load of shit to break that. Although, if Tower go first, one of their prominent blobs might have a fucking feeling of pain. Hmm, yeah. And the Necrons are another example of an army that is just good into both Custodes and Tau for numerous reasons that I don't quite understand, but people keep saying. And on top of that, they got a buff when they changed all the core rules for them uh, an FAQ or two ago. Uh, the Necrons is a good example of them uplifting another faction that might be able to combat the new menace. And we'll talk more on that in a moment. But some of you are just laughing. You're just going, ha ha, yes, ha ha, like a sicko, because fuck the tournament players right you're a casual player you play like six to ten games a year fuck those tournament wankers however it does affect the casual game too because the custodians and town codex are a good example of where even the worst things in the book are still better than the best things in other books it's just not a very good place to balance the game around you'll be a casual player who's getting their first game in in a couple of months you're going to pick up a, the new book for the army you've been waiting for Tau being a good example of people being very excited to play the new army and then you're just going to dumpster your friend who's casually playing i don't know blood angels or something and it's not going to be a fun game for anyone and the really frustrating thing is that it doesn't have to be this way we already saw some changes to the points of the custodies book before it came out the book was not even the correct rules for the custodies within like a week of it coming out we had on release weekend an update to change the price of misericordias and some shit then we had another one a week later to or less than a week later i think it was to drop the price of trajan and the bikes preemptively for that metagame we never really saw pretty fucking wild and then since then we've also had data slate update and an faq fixing some of the really bad wording in the book as well so we're at a point where these armies are broken and they are fucking the competitive game up and we've had three updates since the release of the custodians book alone and none of them have a Address this issue that's fucking shit it's one thing to have a game system where you release a book and it's broken you have to wait for the next books to come out to hopefully balance out the meta game it's another to actually have checkpoints and balancing points in place the faqs and the data slate and then not to use them to fix what's currently going on there's an arbitrary placement for these data slate updates the balancing updates i think the next one is late april early may if the comment section of the reddit post that i linked uh, talked about earlier in this video is to be believed but <laughs> Why arbitrarily leave it till then? Why you have another four weekends of the game just looking like a fucking joke? Of people not wanting to go to events? I got asked if I want to go to an RTT this Saturday, and one of the reasons I don't want to go is that I don't want to play just Custodes Mirrors and Custodes into Tau. That sounds fucking miserable. I really fucking enjoy 40k for many aspects of it, not just the competitive scene, but the building and the painting and the books and all that stuff as well. It's fucking cool, right? But it's a shame that this competitive game, that is a place that I'm getting my competitive itch because organised play and magic is such a mess right now, it's a shame to see it just being fucking dumpstered by some really shit balancing. And let's quickly just address some of the hypothetical GW simps in the comment section below who are going to tell me things like, well, maybe you need to get good. Like I said, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who did well at an event because the book is broken and it just smashed people to bits because my data sheets are better than theirs. I don't think we have to get good at this point. The people are saying that they have to do that are probably the ones that haven't played with the new stuff enough, but are still going to be commenting, claiming they have. There's also the other argument maybe we need to adjust and let the metagame adjust, and I do agree with that to quite a, quite an extent, honestly. It would be good to see the, the metagame adjust as people learn and play different tools. Look at how the, the Volkite Contemptor was kind of rediscovered as an answer to Jukari Boats and then be, carried on being a menace and had to be nerfed itself. I like it when metagames are just on their own merit, and we're seeing that a little bit with Necrons, which I'm going to come to in just a second, but I don't think it seems to be happening anywhere near enough, right? But Tower Custodies are still dominating both in metagame share and win percentage. 
Both of those together cause the real problem of a homogenized and boring game. Let's talk about those Necrons for a second, because it's evident that there needs to be some adjustments to Custodes and Tau, and it needs to happen pretty fucking pronto. But I'm not just calling for like an outright price hike of all of the units in these factions. Hell, I don't want them to overcorrect and nerf Drukari, uh, nerf Custodes into the ground. I uh, almost said Drukari then, because there's an argument they did that to Drukari, although Drukari is still doing better than most factions right now. Necrons are a good example of where they had some points reductions on things like Flayed ones that helped them do quite well in general because they had a, a good unit that's cheap and effective for the uh, the mission structure for doing uh, secondaries but on top of that they also got core added to a load of units that arguably should have had it when the codex came out but it meant the book got better and what i want to see in the point adjustments and data slates coming forward is that they are lifting up every other army instead of inadvertently nerfing both death guard and sisters of battle had more nerfs than most. Uh, Sisters of Battle, for example, had points increases across the board, across all the best units like Sacrosanct and Morven Val. Then they had their um, uh, heavy weapons platform shooting girls nerfed by having only one chair be popped at a time. And then the latest Bloody Rose supplement makes it that you can't take Morven Val or Celestine or Hospitaller in the fucking detachment. Probably because of uh, bad uh, wording, but it might actually be a nerf. Who the fuck knows at this point? I want to see them pump up and lift up the other factions more so than just drag the old ones, uh, the, the overpowered ones down. That's what I really want to see. On the topic of how you adjust the other ones, I think crisis suits need to be less durable and the whole army needs to be more prone to being charged. Whether that's changing the stratagems and the effects that reduce your charge or upping the cost of the screening units, that might be one way to do it down on the towel. I have some stronger opinions on the custodians. I don't think, originally I wanted the bike points to go up, but I think making them any Madeira might make them really awkward to play. Every points update you do to the custodians, every points hike you do, will chop off a body from another unit elsewhere. And the average custodian Custodian is like 45 to 60 points depending on which unit we're talking about. So when you up every like a unit by five and you take three of that unit, you've now lost a body and you've got to find where to put those points elsewhere. Points have to go up. Trajan is way too cheap. 160 points, he's the best character in the game, barring none. But I think really we need to see some errata and some changes to how the um, stratagems work in Custodian. Similar to what we saw with Admech when they changed some gun profiles and some stratagems there to fix the veteran cohort spam. I think having these stratagems be one CP for a unit of three models or less, it might just need to be flat two when used on bikes, for example. Or maybe even, and I don't want this to happen because it makes me sad, but it's the correct thing to do. Maybe have one of them, probably the Emperor's Auspice, only affect infantry. So you can't put it on bikes or vehicles. Uh, and that way your dreads and your bikes lose a bit of their unreasonable durability. Here's a question to you in the comment section. Is there a faction that you play at the moment that got nerfed, Death Guard or Sisters, for example? And what would you like to see done to improve that faction to allow them to compete on the, the, the stage of Warhammer as a competitive game? Is there something you think that is a really easy fix for your favorite faction that's underperforming right? That's the video. I've been Vince. That was all about the problems with current 40k in competitive and how it bleeds through the casual and some of the fixes that I think. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Tell me what your fix for your faction would be. And I'll see you all soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Tough enough.